All right, if you're watching this video and just so happen to be thinking about moving to the Oregon coast and want to live in an area that is quiet and private and scenic, we're gonna talk about a great one in this video. Stay tuned to learn more. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Paul Clem with the Oregon Relocation Team coming to you from the Oregon coast. And in this video, we're going to highlight Otter Rock, which is one of the coolest coastal villages on the central Oregon coast. The Oregon coast has about a dozen or so villages that aren't uh, necessarily towns, these aren't incorporated cities, these are just little communities with a lot of second homes, a lot of vacation homes, but most importantly, I think, the quiet, the privacy, the scenery not being surrounded by all the tourism, in particular the, the shops and the restaurants and things like that. I think a lot of people really appreciate those attributes when they see these different coastal villages and Otter Rock is definitely one of those villages that fits firmly into that category. In fact, we made a video recently about some of these Oregon coast villages. If, if you wanna check that out, I'll link th to that right here. But Otter Rock is on the central Oregon coast, north of Newport, south of Depot Bay. So it's about seven or eight miles north of Newport proper, and it's about five miles south of Depot Bay. So Depot Bay, if, if you're not familiar, does not have a ton to offer, to offer necessarily as far as things that you would need day-to-day -day services and amenities. It's a great little tourist stop. There's a great little oceanfront uh, kind of main strip or drag where you have shops and restaurants and things like that. Uh, really great whale watching in Depot Bay. This is the whale watching capital of the Oregon coast. So Depot Bay is a great spot to have, uh, you know, just to your north. But Newport, a town of well over 10,000 people, uh, one of the larger communities on the Oregon coast, one of the busiest and most bustling communities on the Oregon coast, having Newport directly to the south is really going to give you an opportunity to have just about everything you need. Again, you know, in your day to day, as far as grocery shopping and things like that, you know, you have your Walmart there, your Fred Meyers there, and you have things like Nye Beach and the Aquina Bayfront. So there's a lot of things to do in terms of activities and great restaurants and things like that. So Newport, definitely one of the more popular towns on the Oregon coast and Otter Rock is just to the north. All right. So before we talk more in depth about Otter Rock, if this is your first time to the channel or you've been here and you haven't already and you want to get more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. And we've helped so many people relocate to Oregon and move to the Oregon coast. And as real estate professionals, we absolutely love to help with that process. So if that's you, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link down below in the description of the video and schedule a Zoom call with us. All right, so Otter Rock. So what are the things you need to know? What are some of the things that makes it great? What are some of the things that make it unique? And what are some of the things that maybe make it a less desirable place to live? Well, everybody's preferences are going to be different in terms of what type of community they want to be in. So the type of person who's going to be looking at Otter Rock as a viable destination or landing spot for your move to the Oregon coast is going to be looking for a very quiet, very private community. Now, on one hand, it's a very small area with really only a couple hundred people who live there. So you do have more of that laid back feel. However, you have this beach access uh, to Beverly Beach, which is just to the south of Otter Rock. You have a Moe's, you have uh, actually a winery there, Flying, Flying Dutchman Winery. You have a little candy store with, you know, it's like a coffee shop too. So there are some things that people will actually pull off of the highway, uh, you know, to, to get to, to stop in Otter Rock and spend time there. So you do get people in and out, but it's not nearly like you're going to get in some of the larger cities or towns on the Oregon coast. Now, Otter Rock itself is along this road, Otter Crest Loop, that you can actually access uh, a little bit further north, a little bit closer to Depot Bay, and you can go in uh, and access some parks and scenic viewpoints. Cape Foulweather uh, is there. Of course, Cape Foulweather was probably named by somebody who was just getting to the Oregon coast for the first time. There, there's, not, uh, there's not worse weather here in this area than there are in other areas of the Oregon coast, but yes, Cape Foulweather is right there. So again, you have some scenic viewpoints, some parks and things like that. 
Beverly Beach to the south, but Devil's Punch Bowl State Park is probably the biggest attraction uh, in Otter Rock. So again, there are, you know, there's a beach access, there's a couple of restaurants, you know, there's some things to do to pull off the, the highway and, and get to, even if you're just taking a break on a road trip or things like that. But Devil's Punch Bowl is the big draw in this area. This is a place that people come to from far and wide to check out and photograph. And this is basically an area where you had like a sea cave and, and the roof uh, or, you know, the top of it collapsed in so you have this cool geological formation that um, it is a really big attraction it's just you know one of the really cool things that you have in terms of scenery along the Oregon coast so Devil's Punch Bowl is a big attraction in this area when you look at Otter Rock uh, in terms of the residential development in this area you have uh, kind of the primary area again by where you have Devil's Punch Bowl State Park where you have the Moe's and the winery and things like that there are a handful of homes in this area you're gonna get a pretty big range pretty modest homes for the most part it reminds me a lot of like the type of homes that you would see in Nesquin for example another coastal village on the north side so north of kind of the Otter Rock Village area you you have the inn at Otter Crest so you actually have a little resort there there's timeshares there's a restaurant I haven't spent much time at the resort, but um, there's a lot of units. It looks like a really cool place. And then connected to the resort, north of the resort, still is a gated community called Seacrest. And there's and there's probably about 70 or 80 homes in this area, something like that. Um, at most, really might even be like 50 or 60 homes. But this is a HOA community, a gated community. These are nice, larger, little more upscale feeling homes for the area. So you, you do get a pretty big range um, and a pretty diverse offering as far as the type of homes that you could be in, you know, types of properties that you could live in, in Otter Rock. And I think because of that, that's really going to appeal to a wide range of people looking for a smaller, quieter, more private, you know, coastal village. Another thing about Otter Rock is if you were driving on Highway 101, there's a couple signs. So there is some signage down into this area, but you wouldn't otherwise really know it's there. So this area is very insulated or rather uh, kind of protected from the tree line. So say you're going south from Depot Bay, you're gonna go up and over Cape Foulweather and it's a very wooded area. So you're really kind of in the forest and in the trees and then you drop down into Otter Rock through the tree line and then you know the horizon opens up and you get the ocean views and everything. So it's a really beautiful, very scenic area. But again, you are very private because you don't really see it from the highway. So you're not getting any of that through traffic from Highway 101, which you really get just about anywhere on the Oregon coast. There are a few towns uh, where 101 doesn't go directly through it, like Pacific City, for example. Manzanita and Cannon Beach as well. But those are a little bit closer to 101 and much larger towns. So you're still getting a lot of traffic in those areas. Whereas again, Otter Rock, unless you were going there specifically, you wouldn't really know to even turn off into this area. So I think it is kind of a hidden gem in that way. It's not an area that does get a ton of traffic to it unless people are going to Devil's Punch Bowl State Park, which does get a lot of people too. So I think you get a pretty good balance there. I mean, you do get a fair amount of people in and out, uh, but it's not like a lot of towns on the Oregon coast where Highway 101 just goes right through the middle and inevitably, especially in the warmer months, you're getting a lot of traffic and a lot of activity. Now, I don't typically like to talk a ton about median home values because you could be watching this two, three, four, five years after I make this video, right? So home values change over time, um, typically up, but you know, things can swing depending on what the market is doing. But like I had talked about, you have this kind of primary area in Otter Rock that is near the state park and near the Moe's and the winery and all that stuff. Um, and that's going to be a little bit more modest. You know, you have like gravel roads and it has a little bit more of a undeveloped feel to it. And you can get homes in this area probably from about 450,000 up to about six, $650,000. And then there's gonna be some stuff that's gonna be much higher than that. Uh, but few and far between, these are gonna be more modest homes in this primary area. And then you have the Seacrest of development, this gated community north of town, or, you know, well, town, you know, north on the north side of the village, uh, where you have, you know, maybe homes in the sevens and eights and nines, but you have a ton of homes in this area that are going to be a million plus, maybe up to 1.5 plus, depending on the size and, and how, how uh, good the view is. I mean, that's really ultimately what's going to add a ton of value to most homes up and down the Oregon coast. 
there are hiking trails and pathways all throughout this community. Um, in particular, in that Seacrest development, there's a lot of, there's a big trail system. So it's a really cool area and that you have so much at your doorstep as far as being able to get out and walk around and really be at the ocean, you know, access some of the beaches in the area. Uh, and a lot of it is going to be in walking distance where everything on the Oregon coast is on the ocean. Pretty much everything is going to be a five, 10, maybe 15 minute drive to the beach or to beach access to really regardless of where you are on the Oregon coast. But this is really a true oceanfront community. Uh, again, it's less developed, you know, in, in that you have a lot of the natural areas parks, scenic areas, things like that, again, at your doorstep that you can just get out and walk around and explore and really take all that in. So if Otter Rock is an area that sounds interesting, if you wanna learn more about Otter Rock or uh, villages, coastal villages that are similar to Otter Rock, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link down below in the description of the video. Schedule a Zoom call with us and we can talk about, you know, what your move is going to look like, your, your budget, your timeline, and really put together a game plan for you. And if this video was helpful, make sure to hit the like button, that helps us out a lot. If you wanna get more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. As always, really appreciate you watching. Until next time, we'll talk to you later.